Evening, sword family. Tonight we're doing something a little bit different, as you can probably most likely tell. Now, most people who watch this channel already know that I make Asian style journals. And this is everything that I use to make my journals. So, we're going to do a little step-by-step -step tutorial to show people exactly how I do it. So, here I have an unbound journal. Lined paper on the inside. There's the front cover. There's the back cover. The first thing we're going to have to do is we have to plot out where the holes are going to go. And for that, we have a piece of lined paper here. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to mark off a quarter of an inch from the edge. in a few different spots just to make sure that we get it all straight Try and make sure that everything is all lined up properly and there we go it's not a perfect straight line, but it doesn't really matter. Don't need the ruler anymore. So the next thing we do is take our paper and fold it once. Twice. and three times. Now we're going to open paper up. As you can see, we kind of have a little bit of an accordion effect here. We take our pen, we line up faces like so. One, two, three, four. So that is where your holes are going to go. Now, I already have a smaller version of the exact same journal pre-made right here. You can see it's much smaller, but also lined paper inside, front cover, back cover, Let's see if we can get the wax seal to focus. There we go. So we're just making basically a larger version of that. So now we're going to take some of our lined paper. You can't do it all at once. It has to be done in sections. Otherwise, your, your all here is going to get all gummed up with all the paper and stuff. 
we take the first section of our journal, make sure all the pages are lined up the way we want them, line up our template, and that is what the binder clips are for. We take, we put one, on the bottom. Make sure it's held on good and tight. Take another one. Put it on the top. Like so. Now you want to make sure that your holes are going to be on the right side of your paper. Because this is an Asian style journal. Your binding is going to be on the right side instead of the left side like most most Western books are. Now I didn't used to have to do this, but a little bit of trial and error, I found out that weightlifting gloves will keep me from getting blisters because this is the most annoying and tedious part of the entire process. So, line up. our holes and push and for some reason it's not wanting to go through I was getting something out of there. I actually did forget something. This is what I use to basically pick all of the little circles out of the inside up here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little circle of paper in there. And if you don't empty that out every once in a while, it's going to get stuck. You won't have enough room See? That's just the top. It's just the top layer. For some reason, this table flexes too much for the awl to actually go through. Until I put a hole in my table. <laughs> we do this for all four. All the way down the line. <laughs> They're all not wanting to go through. Of course, the one time I actually want to record this is being a pain in my ass. I've made how many of these stinking journals, but of course the one time that I actually want to record it and show everyone, it's being annoying. <laughs>
There we go. That one went through. So that one. Now I'm only going to show the first set because this really, really gets teeth. Once I get through these, we'll do a little editing magic to get through the rest of them. off. Stick those over there. Now that you've done the first set of holes, you don't actually need this piece of paper anymore. You can just take your cover set your lined paper aside and just use this for the rest. But, as I said, this is easily the most annoying and tedious part of the entire process. So,
can you tell I've done this a few times? Let's see if we can get a Yeah. I've done this once or twice on here. And over here are all the tiny little holes that I punched in all that paper. Binder clips are done. Put those away. Done with the hole punch. Because the rest of it just binding and then sealing and then we're done so yeah all right so have all of our pages we have our front cover we have our back cup. Make sure everything is all lined up and ready to go. This, at least for me, is the fun part. We have our needle, we have our wax thread, there's the end of it. <laughs> so back up just a little bit so you can see more of what we're doing. have our thread. We have our needle. So now the next thing we have to do is to roll out the amount of thread that we're going to use. And I forgot something again. I don't use a knife to cut my thread because once this book is bound, it's remarkably difficult to get a knife into the bind on the inside to cut the thread when you're finished. Now I have small knives. I have quite a few of them, but none of them will fit once this is completely bound. So what do I use? fingernail clippers. It works. It works really well actually. So set those aside. You're going to measure from one end of your journal to go to the other, back across, and go Back across again, and back one more time. 
that should leave you with plenty of thread to make sure you're completely fully bound. So, we take our fingernail clippers. We're just gonna clip off the end. Now we should be done with the thread, unless I screw the binding up again. We're gonna take our needle. through. Now, because I screwed up my pages, I'm going to have to line them all up again. our needle and our thread. We're going to go to the second hole. You're going to open your book to any point. It doesn't really matter which. Any point in the book. I usually try and pick somewhere near the middle. Doesn't always work out that way, but I try. Start our thread through and get it most of the way. And you're going to take the rest of it, tuck it so that you can find it again. And see, I have quite a bit sticking out over here, but that's what I want. I want to be able to find this spot because that's where I'm going to tie it off when I come back around. So now, we go underneath, all the way through, we make our first loop. Tighten that thing up. You have to do this with every single round. Because if you don't, it's not going to be tightly bound and and you're going to have a bad product, and I just won't do that. One of the earlier ones I made for this batch, I actually had to rebind it three times because it kept coming loose and annoying me. So now we're going to go across to the next hole, pull it through, Make sure it's tight again. And then you're going to go back through the top. So we make another loop. We tighten that one up. So you're going to have almost a rectangle by this point. We go to the next one, underneath, pull it through, tighten it, come back around, underneath again, and make another loop. Now there's an empty space here. We're going to fill that when we come back around. Now, we come back underneath to loop again, going the other direction. See that? On the end. Make sure it's tight. Now we're going to fill in this gap here come through here. And we're going to 
pull it through. Make sure it's tight. And now, there's a gap on the bottom. So now we're going to fill that gap in. And make sure it's tight. And then we go to the first hole, go through, pull it through all the way, tighten it, we make another loop here, just like we've been doing, pull it through, Tight, tight, tight. Now we're going to go back around the top, just like we did down here. Now we're doing it here. Now this is a spot where it tends to get a bit dicey. So we're going to go through, like we've been doing. Sure it's straight and lined up with all the rest. Tighten. Now, this is where this tail comes in. Because you're not going to go back all the way through. You have a gap here again. So you have to fill in that gap. You don't want to go all the way through. You want to go through to the point where you started and only that far. So now we need to fill in the gap. Nope, we're still a few pages up. And we're still a few pages up. Now see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. See this? It's come loose. So now, tighten that back up again. I will not ever accept a loose binding. I will redo the whole thing before I accept a loose binding. Alright, let's see if we can get this. And there it is. There's our needle. So now we're gonna pull it through. Again, pull on that end. You want to make sure that's nice and tight before you finish it, because this is the end of your binding. You want to make sure all those vines are nice and tight. Now, loop your ends, cinch that thing down as tight as you can. Make sure. Check all your bindings on the outside. Now, loop it again, make a knot, take your clippers, try and get in there as close as you can, cut off one end, off the other end, and voila! Bound all the way, front and back, four holes. So now, last piece of the puzzle.
is my signature, my wax seal. The seal is my own personal design. I had a maker on Etsy carve the seal. Gotta go with a black candle. I mean, come on, it is me. I like that. All the things that I'm finished with, put them away. Do I have to do this part on camera? No. Will I edit this part out? Probably not. <laughs> that? See that? Come on, focus. That's my wax seal. This is my wax spoon. And these are all my lovely new wax beads that I just recently purchased. I will stick the link to these in the description. So now comes the fun part. We have a green journal, single color. Green, front and back. On the small journal, we have red and gold. But I don't have any more of these colors. They're gone. So, we're going to pick from all of these new ones see what we're going to do. Now, I usually have three beads per seal. I want to have this, I want, it needs to be big enough that it's going to cover this. Let's see we think of this kind of gold-ish color of two of those we'll take this kind of reddish brown The problem with wax seals is once you make them, you can't unmake them. So you have to be fairly certain the colors that you chose are going to work well together. I hope you can all still hear me. My heater in my apartment just kicked on and sometimes that will kind of get a little interference in the microphone so I'm going to try and speak up a little bit more. We're, we're melting the wax beads here. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick that up very well because of the light from the candle. 
going to try. There we go. You can see them. They were solid beads, and now they're starting to melt. Now, I used to do this thing where I would take a toothpick and I would use it to stir the beads and try and get the colors to mix in the spoon. But I found out through kind of trial and error that that doesn't actually mix them very well. This little motion here kind of rocking back and forth. Oh, got my spoon a little closer. This little rocking motion actually does a better job. And then of course, when you pour it, it's gonna mix on here. Looks like we're melting. I'm gonna move our seal a little closer here. got a bubble. Hopefully that won't affect it. Pour. Circle. Try and get the area covered as much as possible. And we take our stamp and push. We're gonna let it sit there for a minute to make sure that it gets the stamp on there. And there we go. Almost the same color as the smaller one. a little bit more gold, or maybe a little bit more red than the smaller one. But there you have it. Finished, bound, sealed, Asian style, red from right to left, of left to right. Thank everyone for watching. Come join my Patreon. Patreon.com slash B-L-A-D-E-D-T-H-3-S-I-S or buy a tea house shirt at bonfire.com slash the tea house shirt. Buy a journal. You can find my links at IndieCD.org. I hope everyone enjoyed this. I enjoyed it a great deal. This order is finally finished. This video is finally finished. See you next time, folks.